Hello, everybody. Just make sure I could find the stream. Boom. All right. Let's rock and or roll. We're back. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, uh. Pump it. Pump it. Dance it. What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Tuesday live stream. Your haircut looks fantastic, by the way. I don't know who your barber is. Me? Yeah, you did a good. Oh, you cut your hair. Yeah. yeah, you're just a handsome. You're just a handsome young man over there. Thanks. Uh, what's up, everybody? If you can hear us, see us, please uh, smash some likes, say hello in the chat box. Let us know that you can hear our voices. That'd be great. And uh, or excited to have you. If you are new to the community, please let us know. We'll do a very brief introduction here and then jump into today's training. <laughs> What's up, Carl? And uh, so if you are uh, if you're a first timer, even if you're watching this recording later on um, and you just joined the community, well, first of all, howdy and welcome. Uh, Guy and Elon Ferdman here. We're the co-founders of Satori Prime. Uh, our organization has been around for almost 12 years. This June will be 12 years. Time keeps ticking away. Uh, we have been uh, coaching and had the privilege of coaching people and executives and organizations now for about 36 combined years, believe it or not. I know we, we still have baby faces, I know. <laughs> but, uh, but that's why I keep this beard on. So um, to, to prove my efficacy. Uh <laughs> Uh, oh, anyway, tell them about those those hurt little boy parts. And I know. Tell them what they've won, Johnny. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know, it, this is for us. It's not just a. It's a business. It's our heart's work. It's uh, passionately what we invest much of our time doing is working in the psychological mindset, uh, energetic healing spaces, and we have been investigating for twenty years or combined forty years between the two of us now. Um really what does it take for a human being to transform their life? How do we um, leave behind some of the old strategies and patterns that not just people have used, but humanity has used as a whole? And how do we bring in philosophies and practices that ultimately really kind of change the very foundation from which we're experiencing our lives from? So whether you're a coach or a consultant, an entrepreneur, or just a self-improvement enthusiast, I want you to know that if you are enthusiastic about transforming your life and and or making a difference for other people, then you're definitely in the right place. And uh, Elon and I do these kind of trainings here in the community. Every Tuesday, we have other team members and Alex Franklin, who's in the chat and other people who support our community who, who also do trainings throughout the weeks here with different perspectives, some on business, some on mindset. Um, and Elon and I, we, we look for a, a holistic approach and how you guys can really start thinking differently about your interpersonal healing. And when we say healing, we really mean like you will feel different. You will no longer have the trappings of your old patterns. You will perceive yourself and others in a different way. And ultimately our goal is that you experience yourself from a highly compassionate place that uh, well-being is the normal architecture for you every single day when you wake up, that you feel safe in your body and that you have this incredible belief in yourself that you can manifest and create anything at all that you want, uh, really recognizing that everything in your life is coming out of you. It's a foundation. You are like the dirt in the soil, you know, in the best way possible that everything is growing from. And so if you are trying to transform your life, but the dirt hasn't been tilled and hasn't had fertilizer in a while, and it's just like dead clay soil, it's very, very difficult to make anything grow from that. Um, when we resource that part of you and that gets transformed, right? Because that's ultimately what transformation is, is going from one state of being to another. Uh, 
what's possible for yourself, your life, your relationships, your businesses it takes on a whole new uh, breath of air. So uh, a few resources, if you haven't taken advantage of them yet, um, one of them is the 28 uh, day meditation that we offer. And um, the software gives us this cool little tool now that we can do that. So you can scan that with your phone. Uh, but it should be told if you probably registered in the last two, three weeks for this group, then you are uh, automatically registered for that meditation practice as well. And we we strongly, strongly recommend that. Um, just to clarify, it's 28 days, but there are four different meditations, one that we have you practice, uh, one for each week. These are not the, hey, sit down and quiet your mind meditations. These are uh, what we call active healing meditations. You actually participate through your awareness and these practices will actually train you how to go into higher states of consciousness. Okay. Um, and then we'll teach you what do you do with the, the higher state of consciousness once you've arrived and how does that elicit a transformative healing response in, in the human body. And this is a very intelligent divine machine that we have here. So that's a, one of the best resources that we have. We get, I mean, I think daily reports now from people about how transcendental and how transformational it is. And they don't even I had the craziest story I, I shared with our team, but um, a woman who's been in our programs recommended that her mom go do these uh, meditations. Her mom had not really done a lot of personal development work. She j jumped in and the, the daughter told me the other day that um, her mom had been suffering from celiac disease or has suffered from celiac disease and celiac for those that don't know is highly activated by stress. So it's a stress response in the body. And since doing the meditations, she hasn't had an episode. So it's like, you know, these are way more than just, Oh, I'm going to sit here and calm my mind. Like most people that come to me, friends, uh, people that I meet, et cetera, and I'm like, do you have a meditation practice? The response is usually something along the lines of this. I tried. It doesn't work for me. I asked them, why does it not work for them? And the response is always something along the lines of, I can't, I can't get my mind to be quiet. Mm. And my next question is, who told you that the point of meditation is to get your mind to be quiet? Mm-hmm. And then they usually pause and go, I just thought that's what it was. I go, well, I've been meditating for, I don't know, at this point, seven years, eight years in a row, like without missing a day, right? I'm like, my mind still goes crazy. And then they go, they look at me like, really? I'm like, what if I told you that meditation has nothing to do with quieting your mind? Mm -hmm. Guy and I learned from a Rinpoche. And for those that don't know, Rinpoches are like master... Uh, meditators, this guy <laughs> was actually living in a cave in the Himalayas and, and we got an opportunity to learn from him, which was, he's, he's one of these like reincarnated masters. He's like the sixth iteration of, of one of the, the Rinpoches. In any event, um, he even said, he's like, my mind still talks and is still loud. And so this is the guy that's been doing it from birth. You know, he's, I think he was in his mid forties at this point. So like 40 some odd years. Right. And I remember even hearing that and kind of like put my mind at ease. Cause I was like, Oh, okay. Like these are the most practiced meditators and it's still, so I don't even think that quieting the mind is like an end goal agenda. It like, you're never going to quiet the mind. It, it, it just, the mind's going to do what the mind's going to do. What, one of the best things I've heard around meditation is meditation is simply you saying, I'm going to take these next five minutes, these next 10 minutes for myself. And I'm just going to get acquainted with what is happening in here. Mm -hmm. This is the thing here, 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 here. Like this is the thing that you have access till the day you die. It's the only thing that you're guaranteed to have till the day you die. Okay. So wouldn't you want to invest some time and understanding in learning like what this is and how it operates and what it does and what it can't do and all these kind of things. And so that person told me that during meditation, the nervous system has a, a intuitive way of releasing that which it no longer needs. 
sometimes that release comes in the form of you literally playing out your to-do list for the day. How many of you guys have the, the to-do list mind thing when you meditate and it's like, well, yeah, I got to do this. Sometimes it's just this trying to figure something out. Like, Today, you know, I was I dropped in meditation and it was, it was actually a really beautiful meditation. And during it, I'm getting like all these messages about uh, a new project that Guy and I are looking at doing. And it was just like, was, do this and do that and talk to them this way. It was like crazy. I was like sitting there going like, wow, look at you figuring out all this amazing stuff while I'm just lying here. It was so cool. And that happens. And sometimes you fall asleep and that happens. And sometimes your body shakes and that happens. And Whatever it is, I want you to get that that is your body's natural intuition on what needs to be moved and released so that you can have a beautiful, hopefully more peaceful, productive day. And so if I, hopefully this gives you some sort of solace, like there is no way that meditation is supposed to look. The thing that, that used to upset me the most is I would have these incredible experiences every once in a while where it's like literally like floating through galaxies and light is shining through and around my body and I was like oh my god this is the greatest thing ever and then what do you do you sit down the next time and you're like oh let's do that again but it's not up to you it's like sometimes it's this sometimes it's that sometimes it's that like you don't meditate for what happens during meditation you meditate for the 23 plus hours after and the, and the additional awareness that it provides you and the additional levels of peace that it provides you and that additional time to respond to something instead of like it being right here, you almost have this like little bit of leeway as all this intensity is coming at you where you can choose how you wanna respond. And scientifically, this is like scientifically proven that what meditation does is it actually helps to keep your prefrontal cortex awake and alive during super, super stressful situations. Stressful situations, what happens in the brain is all the resources goes to your uh, amygdala, which is the part that is always a fr like fears for something. It's like your, your most animalistic part of the brain. And so when stress hits us and all the stuff goes back here, all these terrible chemicals, cortisol and all these things are flowing through your system and you're hijacked at this moment. And so what they've done is they've done tests on people that meditate for a long period of time. And what they realize that under the same stressful situation, the prefrontal cortex, they might be able to keep 10 or 20% of their resources still here. So while this is all firing and going, Oh my God, the end of the world is coming and we're going to die and we got to run and blah, blah, blah. There's still this part in front that goes, Hey, Let's slow down and let's just think about this as an adult, right? And it gives you more time to kind of respond to things. And so, look, whatever that takes and whatever your body does to give you that ability, right? Like responsibility, as Alicia points out here, wouldn't that be worth your five minutes or 10 minutes of your day for like the next year? If nothing happened but a year down the road from doing these practices, all of a sudden you're like, wow, like my kids don't upset me as much. Everything with my husband or my, my wife is just going great. Or like things at work that used to be like chaotic are now stable. It's not going to happen overnight. There's no magical thing that happens. It's just doing the right practice over and over and over and over again. And then you're just like rewiring yourself from the inside out. And it compounds. Yeah, definitely. Which is beautiful. It gets better. It gets better with age when so few things really do. So please take advantage of that. And hopefully we inspire you to take some action in that part of your practice. Uh, today's topic is about relationships. But truth be told, every topic we, we always talk about here has to do with something similar because uh, life is holistic. And truth be told, we're all relational beings, you know, whether it's a relationship outside of yourself or a relationship with yourself or your relationship to food or your relationship to your spirituality and your meditation, everything is sourced with our relationship, right? Like human beings see the world through relativity, right? And you see the same, um, 
same um, prefix there in the word, right? Meaning that there's the similar meaning there. So we are relationship beings. Uh, we see we see and understand everything through contrast. That's why we often experience both very difficult situations and then both a lot of elation situations, right? Like human beings like learn on spectrums. Um, we see this pendulum swing in society over and over again and how we, we make decisions and change things. And so human beings are like that too. We're, we're always testing. And so we, how many of you guys know that, like, for example, um, like your relationships are probably one of the biggest key factors in your state of well-being? All right. Like I can speak for me, then you can say true, not true in the box or give a rating or say, I like my relationship, uh, my relationship with my wife, with my children, with my family are fundamentally like some of the most important things to me. And some of that is selfless and some of that is selfish as are, are often these things. Um, like when I'm deeply connected to my wife, uh, I, without a doubt, feel more confident. That's just the case. I feel more confident in my business. I feel more confident to take risks. I feel more free if her and I have an argument and we have a state of disarray in a relationship at that time like i lose something right any any good man i think would say that when there's a good woman by his side he feels more confident in his life so true or not true right for you how would that be true for you bro as well you would say 100 percent. yeah 100%. so can, I, can yeah. I just say one thing about that real quick mm -hmm. i think a lot of the times um so partnership is an interesting thing and partnership to me, what I've seen like good partners and I see this in guys relationship and I see this in my relationship. It's like a partner is not someone that's just going to stand by and go, yes, sweetie. Yes, honey. Mm -hmm. Yep. A hundred percent. Yep. I actually find that a true partner challenges you. They push you. They, uh, they allow you to see yourself in a way that you don't want to see yourself with the most like perfect way to show that to you. You know, so like Mandy has a way with Guy where like he can receive what she is offering to him where he can actually take it on. And it, listen, when, when my wife says certain things to me, it's not like I'm like, Oh my God, thank you so much. It's amazing. Like, I love hearing what a piece of shit I am. Like, it's not that. <laughs> and I know that she's always offering from that place where like I can hear it. And maybe if even if my first response is kind of like, eh, I also know that there is love and partnership and all that stuff kind of like there. Like she really, really wants the best for me. And she's figured out the way to allow me to receive that information. And so the per like a perfect partner is gonna push you in all the best and uncomfortable ways um, and you help each other grow. So I wanna talk about like something really specific in, in relationships because I'll, I can tell you, you know, every relationship is gonna have its challenges, right? Ultimately, especially in, in a significant other type of relationship, chances are that the things that you uh, are incomplete or needs that you were trying to get met, things that happened to you around your parents or caregivers, you know, certain trauma that happened, certain needs that were not met for the child. Ultimately, that tends to be what shows up in your primary relationship, right? Like you start requesting that need from your spouse. And truth be told is no one really knows how to fulfill that need except for you. No one really knows that, that what, what was it that the child wanted and was looking for internally. And so uh, what we find in relationships is that people often put a, like a burden on other people to make them feel a certain way. And then the people around them feel like they have to walk on eggshells, like they can't say what they want to say or they can't do what they want to do. And this creates an interesting dynamic. And this goes vice versa, right? It kind of it kind of placates itself in both directions. And the chances are most of you guys are, you know, if you're in a relationship like, you know, there's your parent in front of you with those same challenges and you're trying to get away from that and, and you end up marrying someone like your dad or you end up marrying someone like your mom, right? And so, um, <laughs> do you see Alex uh, post about, do you see Alex comment? 
Elon? <laughs> about the Wi-Fi? No, about the your your room. She says, ooh, pink to purple, Elon, for admin. Do you have a disco ball too? <laughs> I just had the red light on and it turned off, so it changes all the lights. <laughs> there you go. I'll put it up for you so you can see the comment. That's funny. Uh, so well, here's what I want to name because my wife and I, my wife is very much on the spiritual personal development path as well. She's been meditating. She, she was nine. I'm very jealous of that fact because uh, she got quite the head start. And uh, nonetheless, we had this interesting thing in our relationship where in the first year, almost a year and a half, we never argued about one thing. Never. Um, and then we had a baby. We were really tired. We became two drunk buffoons. And then we started arguing about things. And it was like a bit of a shock in our relationship because we were so on the same page all the time. Um, and like any couple, right, we have our, our disagreements and arguments from from time to time. We started looking at our relationship more from the energetics than looking at it from what we what we wanted. And a few things came to pass. And that, and that we're saying number one is we we began to understand and I'll use these words in just a moment here. But we uh, we understood we started to understand how to be around each other to help each other regulate our nervous systems. OK, this is pretty advanced stuff, but it's like there's a certain way that your energetic body shows up and then a certain dynamic that arises there that like really that. almost two people can't help. And without awareness on that, there's really not much you can do about it. And the other part that was a substantial like upgrade for us was really starting to see each other uh, not as a person who needs to meet your needs because only you can meet your own needs. And the practices that Elon and I offer inside of all our programs are experiences that you can have with other people to begin meeting those needs that you have. Like if you really feel into your system where you experience trauma or difficulties or patterns over and over again, there's actually a need, like a not a wanting, a need in the system that hasn't been met. And some of the work that we do is we help people meet those needs energetically with other people or basically objective parties who just have this quote unquote energetic medicine for them. And I just want you to imagine what happens when you walk back into your relationships and that need that your system has been trying to get met but can't get met with mom and dad or can't get met with your spouse suddenly that need is met and you walk back into that relationship and you no longer hold this thing over your partner to have to give to you. They're free. You're free. It completely changes the dynamic of the relationship. And it's so often why when we work with clients, they will say that their relationships are dramatically changing without having any conversations about it. Conversations help. Don't get me wrong. And when you do energetic work and one person changes their energy, the other person has to match uh, an energy. So if you're more of a, you know, in like a victim type of mentality, there's a certain way your energy goes. And that literally makes the other system go into a, like a, a, a perpetrator, right? Like, or um, into a kind of like a more fiery response. And so if you get that victim part, the need that that victim part has been trying to get met, suddenly you'll find that they come out of that role and they're much more placid and much more kind to you, which is kind of crazy, but it's just kind of how it works. So there are three things I want to just talk to you about as far as like nervous system health and energetics are concerned. You guys can write this down if you want, but you kind of have three, three different things that you can approach. Most people, when they come to us, uh, what we find is that they're nervous and this goes for us as well. It's not like we did not go through this process ourselves. Um, most people come to us in a, in a dysregulated state. Okay. And we can say mentally dysregulated, but more importantly, energetically, and their nervous system is in a dysregulated state. What does that mean to be dysregulated? It means basically a person is stuck in a fight or flight response, potentially a freeze response also, uh, but most people are fighty or flighty uh, and they don't flighty. know that. Go ahead. I like flighty that. Or, flighty. Flighty, flighty or flighty or crunchy, um, flighty, flighty or crunchy. And most people don't know that they are because they have been in it for such a long period of time that it's the only experience that they're having. And so, like I said, we're relational beings who learn through contrast and relativity. And so if you have no contrast to anything but a fight or flight response for 30 years, you wouldn't even remember that there's another way to be. Right. So the only time people recognize how far they were into a fight or flight response is literally when they come out of it, the body goes into rest. Right they feel safe in their system and well-being. And then they're like, oh my God, that was crazy. That's where I was for 40 years. And so you need the contrast, you need relativity. And that can only happen through 
inner training, basically, like inner awareness uh, within yourself. So you have this dysregulated state. And then you guys just heard me kind of name it. We, we do some inner work. We do some regulation practices and we can get ourselves to a regulated state. And a person who's regulated will experience things like safety inside their system. Okay. So I don't know how many of you guys could say like, you know, you don't actually feel safe in your body or you really feel safe in the world. And you may have never taken this into consideration. It's usually not articulated this way. Uh, and as people do work with us, they suddenly realize and recognize that they haven't felt safe maybe ever, maybe their whole lives. And safety is not a, a matter of having an insight like, oh, I'm not safe. Now I'm safe. It doesn't work that way. Safety, like love or being exalted or, you know, very excited uh, is a direct felt experience. We can use words to try to describe it, but it is a direct experience that a person is having. Either they are safe or they are not. Okay. <clears throat> And so when we develop safety, we can recognize, whoa, I was really, really stuck in this other experience for a long time. I had no idea. And so that's that's what we want to work on. We want to work on going from dysregulation into regulation. In scientific terminology, what this means is your nervous system is going fucking crazy and kind of wacky and can't find its can't find a safety and ground. And oh, when we do these practices, we elicit what's called the parasympathetic nervous system response. We can downregulate the nervous system. The nervous system goes into what's, again, psychology and science calls a rest and digest state. And we love that terminology because it's both now you're in a rest and you're digesting. And what most people don't realize what they're digesting is the body can now digest and metabolize stuck energy in the body, which is what we call healing, right? When we can actually metabolize stuck energy in the body, this is literally what creates healing in our systems. And your body just does this as long as you put it in the environment and container for it to do so. And so the meditations that we talked about early in this training are practices that you guys can start doing in order to downregulate the nervous system and metabolize this energy. Okay. And then the last part I want to say here about relationships, and this is the, the, sorry, I left this off the, re the recognition that my wife and I had is that not only are we here to witness the other person, we are literally each other's healers. Okay. Can be. Can be, if you want to be. Now, the, this doesn't mean I sit around with my wife and I assess her mental state and go, oh, honey, you should really do this and you should really do that because I don't know about you. I've been in a bunch of relationships in my my life. Women don't like that. <laughs> you know, you, if I sit down with my wife and she tells me something, my first question is, do you want me to listen or do you want my feedback? Because if I give her feedback when she just wants my presence, we're going to probably get an argument. Not intentionally, but that's not her expectation, Right. And vice versa. Like if I don't want feedback, I just like kind of need an ear. I need to vent. Something's going on. I want to be, I want to be heard. I want to be received. That's more important to me. So uh, that that's really, really important. But the, what I mean by being each other's healer is that we started recognizing that when we're going into pattern, we're going into our, our, you know, strategies. And these are just ways that human beings defend themselves, that the pattern doesn't stop until the pattern is witnessed with someone else's awareness. That's how the need gets met. And so we started realizing that by letting the other person go through that process instead of shutting them down, which is what happened to you when you were a child, they said, stop that, you're bad, you're good, don't do that, go back to your room, you know, like all these things that are highly dysregulating to a child. We continue to do that when we're adults, thinking that we're being adults, we're now very wise, but in fact, you're doing the exact same thing to the other person and to yourself that dysregulated you in the first place. Doesn't work. The other thing is just watching your partner going to a pattern, which could be like an anger response or crying or whatever it might be. And just having the wherewithal, and this kind of is advanced, I'm not gonna lie, to like drop into your system, drop into your awareness and witness this person going through their process. And something very magical happens in that witnessing. And so between dysregulation and regulation, we have this bridge that's called co-regulation co-regulation. Okay. So it's like regulating together. And to me, this is one of the most uh, defining properties of our work. It's what separates and makes our work more unique than most pretty much everything you'll find out there because we're not sitting around analyzing you. We're not trying to figure out what's wrong with you. We're not trying to figure out when it got started. We're not trying to figure out why it got started. Although those things are novel and interesting and philosophically even like, you know, enthralling they will do nothing at all 
for giving you access to healing yourself whatsoever. Okay, it'll, it'll create more awareness so you can probably go into your awareness better, but it's not going to do the healing. The healing, part of the healing happens in these co-regulation practices is in two people sitting together. And the reason this works, and if you guys want to learn how to do this, this is why you would want to join our programs and, and do these practices with our community is because that if you think about what happened to you when you were a, um, a child, your expectation, your need when you were upset was you ran up to mom and dad and your expectation was that they would hold you and be witness of you and present with you. And this is, again, what elicits this down regulation of our nervous system. But what happens in society when the parents themselves are stuck in a fight or flight response and the child comes in a fight or flight response and says, I need regulation. And the parent goes, I don't know how. And so the, the dysregulation is then passed on to the child because what the child does is it energetically mimics what the caregiver's nervous system is doing. And any parent knows this. You have an upset child and you're like not aware and you're trying to get stuff done. The child can't come down. It just, the child just, just keeps amplifying their dysregulation. That's exactly what's happening. Now, when we're adults, that is still what is happening. That hasn't stopped happening. So when you're around a lot of other systems that are in dysregulation, they throw you into dysregulation. And so we have an entire society right now of dysregulated bodies trying to defend themselves and find safety. And that's where you start having this, what at least the news media portrays as this giant separation in society, which is really just a bunch of dysregulated bodies trying to find safety. So we can do practices where we co-regulate with another healthy nervous system. And in the same way, when you were a child, you were looking for that need to get met. You can now get that need met as an adult. And it will actually, again, give a parasympathetic nervous system response, downregulate the system and actually train your nervous system how to feel safe, how to feel well, how to be resourced. And if you keep doing this over a period of time, it becomes your natural state. You actually you drop out of the fight or flight response. You drop out of the freeze response. And then you're like, I'm here. <laughs> I've arrived. <laughs> I'm back in my body. <laughs> and when that happens, your relationships take on a completely different quality because now in the same way that nervous systems were passing on dysregulation, your nervous system can now pass on regulation. And so everybody around you benefits from your nervous system, basically, your children, your spouses, your coworkers, doesn't matter where you are. If you're a leader in some form or fashion, you know, running a team, they can, they, they will come out of their psychosis as they are around you, so to speak. Right. And this is such an important uh, tool that is so simple when you understand it. And then you realize, oh my God, if I just do this all the time, there is nothing, no challenge within me, no you know, psychosomatic disease, no uh, relationship, no anything that I can't put back into repair. The reason it hasn't been repaired so far is because your nervous system is in disrepair. And so it's very difficult to do anything from that state because again, the soil needs to be resourced. The soil needs to feel safe. The soil needs to be well. And when you do that, what can spring from that, from that soil is absolutely incredible. Uh, the thing that I want to mention, I was actually just talking about uh, this with someone earlier today. Who was saying that they were, you know, getting up there in age and their question they had was, you know, does this, is it still worth to do this kind of work? And I think where people sometimes get stuck is in this place of like, I am how I am and it is what it is. And I've tried all these things and, you know, at this point it's too late. And from having been through this process myself and through having watched or participated in people's healings um, over the, the bunch past few years, you know, thousands, tens of thousands, I don't even know at this point how many. Everything, everything. It doesn't matter how big the trauma, it doesn't matter how little the trauma, it doesn't matter when it got created, it doesn't matter what your life experiences were, it doesn't matter how old you are, it doesn't matter how much work you've done, Every single thing can be rehabilitated. Everything. There's not a single thing that runs you, is inside of you right now, that is running your life, etc. that 
you can't shift and heal. Not one. I mean, I, I held a woman uh, through a process a couple months back. She was probably like 75, 76 years old. And when I held her, she looked up at me and she said, I have never been supported in my entire life. Mm -hmm. You're talking 70 plus odd years of never having felt support till that very moment. And that moment completely changed her life. And now on the other end of the spectrum, as I've done this work and uh, been able to find compassion for these aspects of myself, which allow for them to kind of dissipate. What most of us in the personal development space have been taught to do is that we need to fix, change, or overcome some way of being. How many of you guys in the comment box, let us know, like how many of you guys have played that game? Like you've just been trying to fix yourself or change yourself or overcome something about yourself. And you've been at this for years. And the thing keeps showing up. That thing that you keep working on or want to change just keeps showing up time and time and time again. And maybe what you notice is like you do some work and the time, there's like a time gap between when it shows up and not, and it's still showing up. Yeah, 20, 20 years, 10,000% played that game, right? Like it just, that's kind of what we're programmed to do. And what happens is you do something and I'm just going to call it a Band-Aid, right? Like you're not actually healing. You're not actually processing. You're not actually doing any of that stuff. You're literally like you found a technology, a technique, and it puts a Band-Aid on that aspect of yourself, like your broken heart or the, the worry and anxiety and the stuff that you feel in your solar plexus, right? Like you, you get this Band-Aid and it goes on there and you're like, oh, okay, good. I can go back to my business and you like go out in life and you're like, oh, look at me kicking ass, taking names. Mm -hmm. And then two months, something happens and it hits your system and that specific charge breaks the bandaid. It like rips the bandaid right off and you feel that thing again deeply. And this time you're like, oh man, what the fuck? Like, how is that here? I've done all this work. I, and, and it's like, how my back, notice the languages, how my back to where I was. And then what comes? Comes disappointment and upset. And you're like, none of this shit works. I try so hard. Here I am still dealing with the same exact thing over and over and over. Right? And then you find some new tool because you find some new guru or some new book or my friend told me about this and I did EMDR and I did tapping and I did this and I did that. I'm move magnets on my, my head and right. Like you find all these things. And again, what happens? Oh, wow. Look, that definitely worked. I feel so much better. And then what now, instead of two months, maybe four months down the road, that same thing hits again. And you're like, what the, like, I thought we already did this and it keeps looping back and back and back. So guy and I played this game for 15 years until we started doing these modalities which are ironically enough, like the most ancient and now scientifically proven modalities. We've had these for thousands of years. They've just got lost because people needed things to be complicated and fancy. <laughs> and humans are not complicated nor fancy. We pretend to be on Instagram, but we're really not. We're simple. We need simple things. You bite your tongue. <laughs> you bite your tongue when you speak of IG this way. Fancy. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know how they have like that new TikTok filter that makes everyone like really, really beautiful. It'd be amazing if there's like a filter where it just made like it created the life that you want, like your someday life. All of a sudden you're like, look at me. I'm on a boat. Look at me. I'm on a, you know, it's, you're just like in your dream reality. That's undoubtedly coming. It's definitely coming. It'll be, it'll I think I just gave someone a really good idea. Yeah. Um, and so what I want to offer you is, yes, the Band-Aids get more elaborate. Uh, and they might last longer and they're still a band-aid. And you've read this in every single spiritual book ever. The only way out is through. The only way out is through. And if the work that you have done is not about actually going within and being with and allowing for 
the pain, the anguish, the sadness, the anger, if the work that you have done is not going there, then I can promise you, A, we've probably tried it, and B, what you have is another glorified Band-Aid. And that Band-Aid will come off and you will go back into this loop of disappointment and upset and all that kind of stuff. So I want to share with you like an amazing story. This just happened. I didn't even share this with our team or, or guy doesn't even know about this, but, um, over the last few months, we've been learning about this very particular character style. One that guy and I unbeknownst to us for six years of having done this work, it was just like one of these sneaky things that we're like, nah, that's not me. Right. And this past few months, it's just like hit us so hard how it so is us. And so I've learned amazing tools and techniques on actually how to be with this part. And so first, like I learned to give this to myself. That's, that's the key here. Like I really learned to give this to myself. So this weekend, uh, my son Shia, who plays a lot of sports and, uh, he was playing basketball and his team got annihilated. Like it is rare to see in kids sports, <laughs> It was destruction. Like at every step of the game, every single one of their players sucked and everyone on the other team was like a rock star. It was, it was me and my, me and dad were sitting there. We're like, what is happening? It was like craziness. So anyway, Shai gets off the, the court. Um, and for those that didn't see, I just one, one other piece that's actually important for later on in the story. But um, Shia and I went to a Miami heat game and, he got to go on the floor because our neighbor is a, is a ref and shy got to go on the floor while the, the teams were doing shoot around and shy is like, I mean, I didn't believe he was this ballsy, but he's ballsy. Like he literally stood up off the, the place that he was sitting and they're shooting the ball. And he's like, give me the ball <laughs> to, one of the, to one of the basketball players. Like, give me the ball, give me the ball. Anyway, he got to shoot a few shots and he drilled a three pointer, like an NBA three, I have it on video. It was in front of. It was crazy. So it's then he a, shows up on. Important to realize that Elon's son is eleven years old. So a, th a NBA three pointer is like a mile away from him. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And he did this cool. It was. It was. I literally sat there. I was like, what is this? the whole team's just standing there, like what? Um. So that happened on Friday night. Sunday was his game. So Sunday he shows up and he's like hucking up threes, and he's missing every single one. I think he put up like seven or eight. I think he maybe made one. So he comes off the, the court and he is devastated. And part of this pattern that Guy and I have been learning is how many of you guys have this part inside that just beats you up constantly? It constantly tells you like that you're not moving fast enough or you're not smart enough or that you should know better or that... It's just constant. It's just berating like you should have done this. I told you not to do that. Why did, I do that? Why did you say that? Why did you do it? Right? Like all these kind of things, right? And so, and if you feel it, and if this is a pattern that you run, um, you'll feel it mostly in your solar plexus and your stomach. This is like bubbling, churning. Some people call it butterflies in their stomach, but it's like this tight, bubbly feeling. And so we're sitting in the car and Shia is distraught. He's like so upset. And so I'm sitting with him and I'm sending him energy. And, you know, we're like trying to do the logic thing and none of it's working, right? Because when you're in that state, it doesn't matter. It's like, you're just inside. It's just like, and it's just rage and anger, just spinning inside. You're like, the, you're like your own punching bag that you just keep beating up. And I'm, we've done work on this with him before. So I'm, I'm, trying to bring him back to those practices and nothing like nothing's working. He just wants to go home. We're supposed to go out to dinner. He just wants to go home and lie in bed and cry. And I'm like, shy, that's not going to help. Like I get that, but like being alone right now is actually going to make this way worse. Why don't we go to dinner? And he's like, no, no, no. Anyway, we go out to dinner and he, I can feel he's like still fuming. So I'm like, we go to the bathroom, we wash our hands. And I'm like, listen, there's this area there. I said, let's go to this thing. I want to show you something. So she's like, you know, you know how we get when we're in that stage? We're like, I hate everything. I hate everyone. I just like keep that. Suffering. <laughs> just leave me alone and let me be myself. Let me, suffer. let me suffer inside. 
Uh, so we get we get to this uh, place, and I'm like, listen, you feel that rage building inside? And he's like, mm-hmm. I was like, I want you to give it to me. So he's very confused. He's like, give it to you. I'm going to give it to you. I'm like, look, I'm going to put out my hands, and you're going to grab my hands, and I want you to send me the anger and the rage that you're looping. Send, send it to me. And something to note if you run this pattern is because this anger and rage was sup like put onto you and created all of this wounding, the last thing you want to do is let this out because your fear is that you're going to hurt somebody in the same way that you've been hurt and you don't want to do that. You guys track that? You guys feel that with me? And so when I said to him, I was like, push against me. The first, you know, push was this little like, hmm. you know, because like there's, it's so hard to get there's that fear. stuff out. There's also fear of uh, repercussion that the other person is going to hurt you in some way. Correct. Mm -hmm. And, and not for nothing, but I'm the one that actually created the trauma for him in the first place. So, you know, we're, we're recreating. And so anyway, the, the, the beauty of it is that like, my point, you can heal all traumas, right? It doesn't matter what age. So I was like, okay, go. And he, he and I can feel this fear. I was like, listen, try it. Here's what you want to get. When you send it to me, you're not, it doesn't hurt me. I can actually transmute it and we can, I turn it into bliss in my body. And he's looking at me, he's like, really? I was like, try. So the second time he goes and he pushes. And this time he's pushing harder and I'm like meeting him and he's pushing and I can start to see, because what happens is when the rage comes out, I want you to imagine it's like so bundled up inside. It's like, Argh. and as it's releasing a little bit, like new, new information gets to come in, right? Like new energy gets to come in. And so he's doing this. And as he's doing this, I can see that like, mm, look, right? Like, it's actually like, there's a little bit of a smile there. And so he finishes round two and he's kind of standing there. He's like, oh. I was like, it feels pretty good, huh? He's like, yeah. I was like, I think you got another one in you, don't you? He's like, uh-huh. And this time he just like goes for it, and gets his legs into it, and, and he just starts pushing. And at this point, I'm like letting him kind of like really push me. And I'm like moving back and moving back and like moving back. Eventually, I'm against the wall, and he's just like full on like pushing on me. And I'm like pushing him, and he's pushing me, and I'm like this against the wall. And at this point, he this is the look on his face. He's like... <laughs> he's like you know so elated and so happy he finishes mm -hmm. he drops his arms and he's just like <sighs> i'm like how's that by the way this whole thing took a minute one minute i was like how do you feel he's like oh my god i feel so much better and i'm also tracking his system which is you know one of the things that that we we do and we can teach people to do and I can feel how like that ball of energy that's just been looping inside has actually been released. And like m now new energy is, is moving. And this kid walked back to the table with a smile on his face, telling jokes, the whole thing. And this happened in no joke, guys. One minute of us doing that practice. One minute. Here's my question. I, by the way, I walked to that table when I tell you like glowing with pride, it is an understatement. I was so fucking impressed with what I was able to do and what we were able to do because not only did he feel amazing, which obviously is like great, I knew the depth of what had just happened. That wound and that thing that just keeps churning inside, some layer of that got healed in that very moment. He needed the basketball game. He needed to go into that state. And me meeting him where he was without trying to change it, without trying to anything, but just allowing for it to be there, allowed for this to move through and a rehabilitation actually happened. And he felt awesome afterwards. And we had the best dinner. It was like so lovely. Now, here's my question to you. I have dedicated my life to this. So I'm not, I'm not asking you like to dedicate your life to this. But the one thing, and Guy will agree with this as well, like the reason Guy and I do work is not to be better coaches. I know it sounds crazy, but like we don't 
invest a million dollars and all this time and all the, to be better coaches. It's not it. What we want is to be better husbands and better fathers. I think, would you agree that that's your number one? For sure. My family. Number one. All the stuff that you guys hear from us, that's a byproduct of all of the work that we do with ourselves and at home with our families. So what you're getting is all of that stuff shared with you. Now, my question to you is, what would that be worth to you to be able to show up like that for your spouse, for your loved ones, for your kids, for your grandkids? What if you could train yourself to be that for them? How much would that be worth to you? And Alex is saying it's priceless. And that's the only thing that I can say. It is priceless. To, to have walked back to that table and felt like what I was able to provide my 11-year-old son so that he doesn't have to do this kind of work when he's 40, like I'm doing now, that he can do it right now with his dad? Are you kidding me? And literally, I was like, wow. Wow. <laughs> it's all so possible. I know you don't think that you... Look, I'm not special. I'm the one that caused all that trauma in my son. Right? Like I, me, with all the work that I've done, I'm the one that caused it. And I'm clear that I caused it so that we can have these experience to rehabilitate it. He needed to have that, the contrast. So now we can have this. And so wherever you are in life and whatever you've done, that's happened. You have a choice of what happens going forward. And you're either going to re-loop the same things over and over and over for yourself and the people around you, or you're going to take a massive step back and you're going to start to give yourself some new tools and some new practices and some new ways of being so that you can then come forward and offer something completely new and different to all the loved ones in your life. And I prop like this shit works 100% of the time. It's not you. It's not that you do the work. It works period. Full stop. It's just a matter of what is it worth to you? Yeah. What's your priority? Yeah, what's your what's your priority? I mean, for me, you know, every, every minute, you know, that we get to be alive is a, is a precious minute on this planet, right? And they, it could either be a minute full of suffering or it could be a minute full of bliss or it could be whatever you want it to be. But life can be very pleasant, not because you ultimately make life pleasant. I really want to say that. It's like you, your circumstances are your circumstances. They may change, they may not change, okay? But the person that's witnessing and experiencing those circumstances is the person either suffering or, or just blissfully experiencing those circumstances. Somebody in your shoes would be experiencing bliss where you experience suffering and vice versa, right? Like, I don't care how, how hard your life is, if you take like a poor family from Africa and they were in your shoes, they'd probably find it pretty blissful to be dealing with what you're dealing with, right? It'd be very different. So... And again, that doesn't make your situation worse or better. We're, we all have our experience, like I said, from a point of view of relativity. And that's your experience. Like whether you're rich or you're wealthy, whether you're sick or you're poor, or whatever it might be, like that's your experience. You cannot compare that to anybody else. And if you're suffering, you're suffering. Like that's the reality. What we have found though is like when people are suffering, they are at 100% in this fight or flight response. They are 100% in their mind. Their mind is going crazy at that point in time and they are not in their awareness at all and being aware is not a matter of having insights oh, okay that'd be good if i did that that's not what awareness is you know what like what elon did there like it's being the attunement between two people an attunement of a situation that's the awareness and that i mean that moment that seems so simple that elon said took two decades of training for him to be that present in that moment to know what to do with his son while his son was in that. And only, only, only because Elon has identified those parts within himself. That's right. 
and did that work within himself so that that need that got met, right? Like that need to move that energy in that way, he's done that work. And so when he sees another human being in a dysregulated state doing that, he's like, oh, I know exactly what this system needs. And that's why you can start being this, this very, what we call energetically influential person to the people around you, right? And even just like not getting into the weeds with his son in that moment, holding ground in his own system, even in the car while his son is fuming to not instigate it more. Cause generally speaking, when we ask, hey, are you okay back there? They're like, no, I'm not fucking okay. And it, it actually like, it actually brings it forward more. Uh, like, I, you know, I, I'll finish it out with this. And my son had a, a thing last night too. You know, he's, he's four years old. He slept with us on the bed most of his life. And he's transitioning out of that because we have a baby now and he's getting too big and it's tough for him. He wants mom and dad, right? Like, and that was a very conscious choice we made. We knew that eventually we'd have to hit this point. And for the most part, he's been great. Like he's been amazing. And last night though, he got like really, really, really sad going to bed. Aww. For whatever reason, really sad. I mean, like, like panic stricken sad. And like the old me is counting the minutes and the time that I'm spending. And I wanted to do other things. I wanted to buy airline tickets and do my life things. And, but I'm there with my son and he's in this state. Now I can try to talk to a four-year-old about why that's happening, but you think he gives a shit? He's whatever fear response, terror response. He's sad. He wanted his mom and his dad. Like that was the reality of that moment, right? Like he wanted, he wanted comfort. And so I'm like, I'm noticing like my old patterns like kind of swimming back here. And then I'm noticing my commitment to having my son have like the healthiest nervous system that he could possibly have and how much better that makes his life and my life in the long run. Every minute I invest with my son, every time I show up for him, every time I help him get regulated again, like later on in life when, again, I'm not there yet, so I don't know this for a fact, but that's what I feel is true deeply is that later on in life, when you see teenagers going to that place with their parents, there's certain hormonal things that play for sure, right? Like I'm not denying that at all. And there's going to be challenges for sure. Like every parent and every kid has challenges. I'm not saying that that's not there. But when a child has been learning how to regulate their own nervous system for 10, 11, 12 years, when they hit that point in their life and they're dealing with those challenges, I believe they're going to be significantly better suited to be dealing with those challenges at that time. And also having a trust with the parents who have built, you know, 10, 12 years of rapport with them that you come to me, we'll get you regulated again. Yes. We'll help you. I'll listen to you. I'll be with you while you're going through that instead of trying to analyze them, which is what they don't want or because none of us want that. None of us want to be really psychoanalyzed. We want to be having our own fucking experience. Like I'm fucking angry right now. Cool. Let's be angry right now. And that's where it was at last night. You know, it was really, really sad. Instead of talking him out of it, I'm like, let's do sad. Let's do sad together. And I, and I held space and it took as long as it took. And he woke up this morning and of course it was incredible. So you know, this is this is the opportunity we all have. And I love that Elon brought it through that it's like never too late. And, you know, I don't know what you think about past lives or future lives, or I, I believe that your awareness is always here. That's why we have a thing that we call the soul. And it may embody again, it may not embody again, but the soul chose to embody this time. And there's something that in this physical form and reality that we can learn that as souls, we don't get to have that experience. And I think that's why we come here. Your, your spirituality is your purpose. Your, this growing experience, this, this school that we call Earth is, is the purpose. And so if you're going to come back and do another life, you come back with all those memories. You come back with all those experiences. Even if you're so old, like, you know, that this is not it. You're going to come back. You're going to do another round. And what you invest in every lifetime pays off in all your lifetimes. And that's why it really is a priceless experience. And, you know, again, for those of you guys who want to discover beyond just this conversation that maybe inspires you or motivates you like how do i do these practices what are the philosophies what are the practices it took elon and i like you said 20 years over a million dollars invested to learn a lot of things that kind of sort of sometimes worked to things that like definitely always work for everybody no matter who does it as long as they do the practices and so like our whole company and our mission has become to share these very honestly simple things with people um that ultimately we know for a fact and we guarantee it will transform your life. So I just want to tell you guys this, like we've, we've had a, a, a fundamental change in how we started thinking about even our programs because we, when we sit back and we go, what is it that we're trying to do here? Right. And you could say, make money. Fine. Okay. There's, there's an aspect to, you're right. We got to make money. Like that's a business. Right. And look, Elon and I, don't have to share any of this stuff. We could just go along, do our own healing work, be with our families, be with our friends and like have our great lives. But for whatever reason, have this giant inclination and pulling 
to share with this. And we can't help ourselves. It literally oozes out of us at all times. And so our intention is, look, if you do our programs, we're here to help you transform your life. We can't change your circumstances, but we could certainly change the person who's viewing those circumstances. And I can tell you that when you transform, in Wayne Dyer's words, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. I would say it even more amplified. When you shift your energy and your relationship to things, they have to change also. This is this thing we call reality is a mirror. It's an organic hologram and it is responding to you and your energy output. The first thing you want to do is learn how, how do I change my energy output? How do I change the signal that I'm sending this hologram so that it changes? And that's why people's circumstances change. That could be instantaneously. That could be a year. We don't know. We can't make you a promise. What we can guarantee you is you do this work, you're going to transform your life. So if you come and want to learn about our programs, uh, go to soulsandseekers.com forward slash messenger. I noticed that the link above here says seekers. And if you click on that, it's not going to go to the right place. It has an extra E, but I will change that after uh, we get off of this recording. So soulsandseekers.com forward slash messenger. There's a short video where I explain what you're about to go through, but we have a, a chat bot that's going to ask you a few very basic pointing questions, things that we need to know about you. And then that conversation gets assigned to one of our consultants. So there's a real person on the back end. Please be nice to them. And what you're going to get is you're going to get a video that explains to you how our process works, how we have made this ascension process for people. And not only what is it, but why does it work for people? Like why? What's the biology? What's the scientific principles behind this? What is the spiritual principles behind this? And that's the best way for you to get your foot in the door. And we want you to know that we're so committed that we, we changed a principal philosophy in this company. We used to just sell a seven week program up front and it's still a seven week program. But here's what we want you to know. We were like, how do we take the pressure off from somebody so that within a seven week period, they're not like, fuck, I have to transform everything because that's a lot of pressure. Now, we know in seven week period, a lot is going to change. Like you're going to get a big dose of transformation, right? We guarantee you. And we also understand that in seven weeks, a lot can happen. Life can happen. Emergencies can happen. Uh, you need to go somewhere. Something happens with a family member. And like, you just can't be as present as you want it to be during those seven weeks. So it's unfair knowing that that happens to people all the time for us to be like, well, eh, fuck you. You didn't get in seven weeks. Get out of here. So our goal, like we said, is to help you transform your life. And we want to remove the pressure. So look, the program is seven weeks. If at those seven weeks you decide, hey, I didn't get everything I came here for yada, yada, we will literally continue to coach you for free in perpetuity. We say for a year, but truth be told, if you want to keep showing up to live group coach calls for the next 16 years, because you love our training, you love our trainer, Nikki back there so much, please do that. Please support yourself. Please be part of a community that is working on this stuff together. You have no idea how many incredible people are out there transforming their life, working so vigilantly on themselves that want to do good in this world, that want to be good in this world, that want to ex export their goodness to other people. And just being in a community like that radically changes your life. It will, it will shift the way that you think and it will shift the way that you feel. And so we're going to let you just stay in that program in perpetuity till you're fucking bored and blue in the face. And you're like, what's next? And you're going to be bored. Yeah, and we want you to be bored because the board, if you're bored, that means you got it. Like you now know these, these principles to your bones and you're like, this is great. My life is transforming and I, and there's more juice on the table for you guys. So like, this is what we wanted to do. We want to take the pressure off you guys. We want you to know that we're, we got your back. And while there is an investment here, it is nominal in comparison to the return on investment that is priceless in terms of what you're going to get back for the rest of your life. It's going to impact every single thing you have ever done in your life. And so we're like, how do we make this so stupid for people to say no to? And so that's what we're doing. Pay one time, get coaching forever, right? Like just, just keep, keep coming back, keep plugging in, keep getting, keep getting this work into your bones. And we, we guarantee it. It's going to be, and, and, and I truth be told in a few weeks, you're going to be like, I can't believe how much headway I've made, how many things have transformed. We just had a, uh, a session with a woman last week and she's posting this week. I'm like, I don't even, I, it's still to this day, 20 years later, I am dumbfounded. My jaw is on the ground with what people can do within a few days of, of just having access to this kind of work. So please guys, if you're interested at any level, do yourself a favor at the very least, get the info, have a conversation with the consultants, see if it's a good fit for you. Let yourself feel a yes or a no in your body. And then they can explain all the logistics and how it all works and all that kind of stuff for you.
All right. I hope you guys enjoyed today's training. We love you very much. Thank you for being here and your awareness and attention. We greatly appreciate it as always. And we'll see you next week. Love y'all.